Grant us, O Lord, to enter upon the duties of our Christian warfare with holy fasts, that being about to fight against the spirits of wickedness, we may be fortified by the help of self-denial through Christ our Lord. O God, who desirest not the death of sinners, but their repentance, most graciously regard the frailty of human nature and of thy loving kindness deign to bless these ashes which we intend to put upon our heads to express our lowliness and win thy pardon that we who know that we are but ashes and for the guilt of our fall shall return to dust, may be worthy to obtain through thy mercy the forgiveness of all our sins and the rewards promised to the penitent through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art moved by humiliation and appeased by penance, incline the ear of thy goodness to our prayers, and when the heads of thy servants are touched with these ashes, graciously pour forth the grace of thy blessing that thou mayest fill them with the spirit of compunction and mayest effectually grant that they what they righteously ask and ordain that what thou grantest may remain forever established and unmoved through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who didst bestow the healing of thy pardon upon the Ninevites when they repented in ashes and sackcloth, mercifully grant that we may so imitate them in behavior as to be like them in obtaining pardon through our Lord. Amen. Grant to thy faithful, O Lord, that they may both undertake the venerable solemnities of fasting with piety and carry them through with unwavering devotion. May the sacraments we have received, O Lord, give us help that our fast may be pleasing to thee and profitable to us as a healing remedy. Jesus is King. This is Timothy Flanders with the Meaning of Catholic. These are the prayers of the Latin Mass for today, Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the Great Fast of Lent, one of the most potent and powerful things that are present in the Latin Mass texts are, is the spirituality of Christian violence, Christian warfare, of fighting against the demonic by means of fasts. As our Lord says, some demons are not driven out except by prayer and fasting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not only prayer, but also fasting. And this is something that is brought out in the text of the Latin Mass potently because, one, it mentions fasting. This is something that has been removed from the new Mass because the discipline of fasting has been removed from the new Mass. Another aspect of it is this, this spiritual, this Christian warfare, as the, the final prayer from the Ashes Rite tells us. Now, some of these prayers made it into the New Rite and some did not. But there's only 13% of the entire Latin Mass prayers made it into the New Rite. Only 13% made it in untouched. Some of them were, were, were modified. For example, the collect of the Holy Innocents was the, the uh, phrase about mortification was removed and then was put into the new rite. But that does not count as a untouched. The 13% is what was untouched for the Latin Mass was brought into the new rite. So this is one of the reasons why trads are so fussy and so stuck on this Latin Mass. You may wonder, if you're not a trad, you may wonder, why are the trads so rigid about the Latin Mass? Well, here's why. So this is our Lenten challenge to trads and non-trads. For those who are not a trad, I challenge all of you to read the Latin Mass. <clears throat> the easiest way to do this is to buy a this, which is the Father Lassant's Missal. And this has all the pre-55 prayers. And especially when you get into Palm Sunday with the blessing of the palms, you have a ton of sacramental prayers that are lost in the 1962, which invocate the sacramental, small s sacramental blessing on the palms against the demonic. But even with the ashes, there is an invocation of the ashes for the healing of soul and body, which is another sacramental, small s sacramental. 
But you can also get this for free. You can go to divinumofficium.com. You can go click on the missile. You can also get it on IPATA, the IPATA app. So you can get this for free. So I challenge you, if you want to, especially if you want to have an opinion publicly about the liturgical controversies in, in the Roman Rite at this time, especially if you want to do that, you need to attend, you need to read the Latin Mass, first of all, and you also need to attend the Latin Mass at least for six months, at least. Unfortunately, there are many people who want to have an opinion, but they've never actually attended the Latin Mass regularly. Well, that's analogous to having an opinion about Chinese culture, but you've never been to China and you don't speak Chinese. It's literally that intense. The spiritual language, the spiritual language of the Latin Mass is a, is a very different spiritual language. It's, for example, if you've ever been to the Greek Rite, if you've attended the Greek Rite for uh, a number of years, you understand that the Greek Rite has a very different language of spirituality. It's, it's obviously the same spirituality, but it's a very different spiritual language. And one needs to really experience it to know the language. And unfortunately, there was a there was a very bad piece written by a it was published by a prominent journal, um, which seemed to seemed to show that these authors had not ever attended the Latin Mass regularly or read the Latin Mass Missal. And so this is a serious problem even among serious commentators. So I challenge everyone who wants to be in this in this controversy. It's okay if you want to have an opinion, that's fine. But you have to have an informed, an informed opinion. And that's what Meaning of Catholic is all about. What we're trying to do is to provoke, promote true dialogos between these different camps, especially this particular controversy, but others as well. And so that's what that's my challenge to anyone who wants to debate this and, and discuss this, is that you have to know this. Another powerful prayer that I just want to mention real quick here before we get into the second part of our challenge, which is a challenge to trads, is the collect for the mass of Thursday after Ash Wednesday, which is tomorrow, which is the, the prayer to avert God's wrath. Definitely a prayer that is either watered down or missing from the new rite. It goes like this. Oh, God, who art offended by sin and appeased by penance, graciously regard the prayers of thy people, making supplication to thee, and turn aside the scourge of thy wrath, which for our sins we deserve. This is the prayer that the Fellowship of St. Anthony, we pray that every day throughout Lent, because we are offering up our penances for clergy and seminarians. And that is our spiritual core of this whole apostolate, is offering up these penances, whether you're a trad or not a trad or just a, any kind of Catholic that you are, this is what unites us at Meaning of Catholic is the Catholic faith and a desire to avert God's wrath, to help clergy and seminarians, and to help fellow Catholics come together with a true dialogos to truly hammer these things out. But in order to do that, we have to have these informed opinions. That's why we're challenging everyone this Lent with this spiritual reading challenge. <clears throat> so the spiritual reading challenge, to reiterate, is so if you're not a trad if you attend the new rite of mass the english new rite i challenge you to read the latin mass you can read this every day it's, it's it takes about five minutes there's there's a gospel and an epistle but there's also the collect there's the uh can the uh, pre the secret prayer and the and the communion and the proposed communion and the final blessing prayer as well there's also a um there's a repetition i think it's on Wednesday and Friday of a um, a genuflection with a so a, an active penitence as well this genuflection so that's the the challenge for trads or that sorry the charge for non trads um, also we're reading through Thomas Akempis meditations on death this is what we're reading through and discussing in the Fellowship of Saint Anthony if you want to join that you have to become a guild member to support our apostolate meaningofcatholic.com slash register or slash donate to join. If you can't afford to donate, but you want to help the apostolate nonetheless, you can always contact us as well. We can give you free membership if you can't if you can't afford it. 
but this is what we're we're reading through meditations on death this is a it's just a huge challenge to anyone who has uh anyone who's not a trad who hasn't really lived in the latin mass this may be a really challenging book to you as well but let's come to the trads now <clears throat> This is our this is our trad challenge to read this book right here. If you are a trad, I've heard trads, I've seen trads on Twitter say that anybody who accepts Vatican II is a modernist. Uh, anyone and Cardinal Seurat accepts Vatican II, so he's a modernist. This is just calumny. This is just again, it's a superficial reading of an individual. You know, if we want if we want non trads to actually read the Latin mass and have an informed opinion about this, and then we ourselves do not have an informed opinion about Cardinal Sarah or any Catholic or any prelate or any person, we are hypocrites. Full stop. So we have to really read these things. This is the challenge I have for trads. Read the power of silence by Cardinal Sarah. This book will kick you in the teeth spiritually. It will really, really challenge you. And I'm just going to read a few selections. Now, some of these some of these selections, no, what, I, what I've got here today, I think trads will really like what he says here. But I'm going to apply it to our movement as trads in a, in a way that might make us feel a little uncomfortable. But here's what, here's what Cardinal Sarah says on page 34. <clears throat> the wonders of creation are silent, and we could admire them only in silence. Art, too, is the fruit of silence. How else but in silence can we contemplate a painting or a sculpture, the beauty of a color, and the correctness of a form? Great music is listened to in silence. Wonder, admiration, and silence function in tandem. Popular, tasteless music is performed in an uproar, a pandemonium of shouting, a diabolical, exhausting commotion. It is not something one can listen to. It deafens man and makes him drunk with emptiness, confusion, and despair. We do not experience the same feelings, the same purity, the same elegance, the same elevation of mind and soul that we experience when we listen silently to Mozart, Berlioz, Beethoven, or Gregorian chant. Man enters into a sacred dimension, into a celestial liturgy, at the threshold of purity itself. Here, music, by its ex expressive character, by its ability to convert souls, causes the human heart to vibrate in unison with God's heart. King Solomon asked God to make him a silent man. In other words, a true child of God. He wants neither riches nor glory nor victory over the enemy, but a heart that listens. In a contrary movement, the modern world transforms the person who listens into an inferior human being. With fatal arrogance, modernity exalts the man who is drunk with images and noisy slogans while killing the interior man. Now, as trads, we are probably saying amen. We are probably agreeing with a lot of what Cardinal Sarah is saying here about modern music. Many trads, we may not even listen to any popular music, for example, um, to our spiritual benefit. But what he says here about silence is very powerful for, I think, the trad movement. The wonders of creation are silent, and we can admire them only in silence. And the modernity which exalts man who is drunk with images and noisy slogans. Now, this is the way that popular music works, as we know. But I think that our trad movement has also been poisoned in by modernity, ironically, because of modern technology. This is something I, I say a lot, but I think that mo the, the, it's analogous to what popular music is. Popular music, as he says, is this sort of noisy cacophony, which just kills the interior man and is not listened to in silence. With, with wonder and admiration and this sort of purity of heart and purity of intention. And modern, modern technology, like social media and whatnot, it has polluted our trad movement in a way that it allows us to have a pity party where we complain and cry with one another, which gives us likes 
and then that helps us or have an endorphin rush or whatever. And this is nothing else than modernity exalting the man who is drunk with images and noisy slogans while killing the interior man. As trads, we can, we've had noisy slogans. We've had images and noisy slogans. And I think that this is one of the way, one of the reasons why many people do not take our, our trad movement seriously is because we have been too drunk on images and noisy slogans memes we're trying to reduce a complex theological controversy to a meme well that's just that's just infantile that's just puerile uh and it's, it's just not serious some of these controversies about vatican ii and these various things are very complex and the academics themselves are disputing about them and so when we throw around memes because we like the serotonin rush that we get when we get a retweet. It's just killing our own interior man. There are many instances where we modern technology allows the trad movement to speak when in fact the trad movement should be silent. And this is just being modernity. This is modernity corrupting our movement. And it's analogous to what popular music is because the trad we can we can circle our wagons and we can complain to each other about this or that thing and we can use modern technology to do that and that's basically just a popular a popular music uh a, a big um popular music party a pop music party is what it is it's a mosh pit a trad mosh pit and it just destroys our interior life. It destroys our spiritual life. Nobody in that mosh pit is saying, hey, let's go all do penance now. Let's all do reparation now. That's what we should be doing. So this text, I, I just took one little piece out of this and there's so many different pieces. But one of the things that really challenges trads if you read this book is that this guy is a uh, from the cloth Vatican II guy. He's quoting St. Paul VI. But this stuff will really challenge you. It'll challenge your spiritual life. So I encourage trads to read this text, Power of Silence, and to consider, if you have, consider, examine your conscience. Do I have a, do I have a Twitter problem? Do I have a social media problem? Should I just give up social media for Lent? Should I give up social media for my whole life? Is this really something that's helping my spiritual life? That's helping the trad movement? Am I helping the trad movement by, by complaining on Twitter? Or not? So, that is the challenge. If you choose to accept the challenge, buy this book. I'm going to be reading selections from it during this series, God willing, every week. We're reading Meditations on Death. To the Fellowship of St. Anthony, and as well, make sure to read the Latin Mass. That is our Lent Spiritual Reading Challenge. Again, if you can support the Apostolate, we do need your support. MeaningofCatholic.com slash register. So let's offer all of this to Our Lady, as always. Under her icon, in thee is unity. This is the Russian icon of the Theotokos which is named Thy Unity, that our unity, especially, this is obviously about East and West unity, but it also certainly applies to our controversies in the Roman Rite as well, because Our Lady is our unity. And if we draw near to Our Lady, we can have the true unity that is based on truth, a true unity of truth and charity. Let's pray. In nomine Patri, sed fili, spiritu sancti, amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tua miliaribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. Mary, Queen of the Home, pray for us. Saint Joseph, Terror of Demons, pray for us. Saint Anthony of the Desert, pray for all clergy and seminarians. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Jesus is King. Amen.